Welcome Bent Riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. <laughs> there we go. Hello everybody. I'm coming to you live from the uh, studios in Pickering, o Pickerington, Ohio, where we produce this webcast usually on a monthly basis. Uh, we have a very special uh, guest today, so we have produced a special report and we'll tell you about that in just a minute. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you look down the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a little red subscribe button. Hit that, if you will. And up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little white eye. That is for information. It'll take you to our website. You can find out all kinds of things about the Laid Back Bike Report. Uh, and so please hit that, and you'll find out more, see what goes on there. Uh, we have the YouTube live chat working today, and that is an integral part of what we do every uh, show. Uh, it allows you to join us and ask your questions, make some comments, uh, chat with our panelists, uh, and even chat with each other. It's all part of the live experience, which we think makes this program special. So if you're on YouTube and look just to this side, you'll see a little box that says live chat. Uh, just type in your... Uh, Type in your questions and comments right there at the bottom. If you're on mobile, you're going to probably find it uh, below uh, where the watch screen is. So just kind of uh, scroll down there. You'll see it. And if you happen to be watching on uh, Twitter or you're watching on Facebook, uh, Bent Rider online, or uh, even our website, if you want to engage in the chat, uh, click through. Uh, there's a little YouTube uh, uh, logo at the bottom of the watch screen. Just click through. You get to YouTube, and then you can look to the right and uh, and chat right there be part of our program so okay so uh, this program as I mentioned earlier uh, is all about a, a special interview with Matt Galat uh, fresh from his uh, Jayo world tour on his trike and we're very lucky to have uh, found some time that he's able to spend with us so uh, I'm going to introduce him in just a minute I do want to talk to you about our special sponsors uh, this week. Uh, the special interview with Macalad is brought to you by TerraCycle, improving your ride experience by making exquisite parts and accessories for your recumbent bike or trike, and HP Velotechnic, creating the best range of recumbent cycles you can buy since 1993. All right, so those are the guys that are helping us put this on today. And uh, Doug, if you want to come back to me, I'm going to introduce uh, the panelists. Um, so see if you can do this, Doug. Um, uh, let's start with you. If you can put your own picture up, we'll make it a little bit easier if I can. Uh, there you are, Doug Davis. You guys have seen him before. He's been on a number of our broadcasts from Dallas, Texas. He collects Velmobiles. Like some people collect coins, it's Mr. Wizard himself. Yeah, Doug Davis. <laughs> Thanks, Doug, for being here today. All right, I think he's got himself muted, so he's, he's doing all the directing. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, we also uh, had Denny Voorhees. He'll be in and out, so I'm not sure we'll be able to show him. And my buddy, uh, Phil Paulson, right over there. Oop, there's Phil. He's helped me out with the uh, slideshow today, so thanks, Phil, for helping out in studio, the expansive studios of the Laid Back Bike Report. All right, Matt Gallat isn't the only trike rider out there touring the world. What makes him so unique is the way he takes us all along for the experience. He uses his daily blog to record and share nearly every important mo moment of his life on the road and does it in video, so that's why they call it a vlog. I find it impossible to avoid the overwhelming urge to watch him every day. Subscribe to, your, to his YouTube channel at your own risk. His stories are endlessly fascinating, and his drone footage is simply breathtaking. And he's quite charming, as you can see right there. Ah, come on, Gary. Matt has taken a short break from his tour of Japan so that he can visit his family in the Detroit area, and that's where we are joining him today. Bent Riders, please say hello and jayo to Matt Galad. Hi, Matt. Hey, Gary. How's it going? It's going great. So happy to have you with us. Uh, I couldn't be more Good effusive on my uh, on my greeting because it, it comes uh, it, it's heartfelt. So, all right, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and start uh, talking a little bit about uh, my sponsors and how they have interacted uh, with your with your trek. So, um, sure. you use uh, their products, I know, on your tour. Can you tell us a little bit about the equipment accessories that you use from TerraCycle and HP? 
Well, HP uh, is the backbone of my journey. Uh, obviously, obviously I, it's the trike that I chose. Um, there's a video that goes way, way back when me and Ryan were looking for trikes originally, and uh, we looked at Ice and uh, and a whole bunch of different brands. And at that point in time, I didn't I didn't really cycle at all. I was just looking for a unique mode of transportation to ride around the world, and uh, I knew that trikes had some advantages. So uh, I ended up, long story short, choosing the Scorpion 20FS from uh, HP Volatechnic, flying out to Germany, building it, flying it back to Ningbo, assembling it, taking it on the road, getting in an accident, destroying it, building another one back in Germany, and getting back on the road yet again with the, the 2.0 version, which I've been able to not get into an accident with, thank God, for, uh, for the, the entire period for the last few years. Well, so. that's pretty much the story I was looking for. You pretty much answered all my questions. So, good night, folks. Thank you for joining us yeah, today. Well, no, no, we got a lot yeah, more to talk about. I just, I just gave you the very narrow, narrow. We can, we can expand on each one of those things. Let's that's what talking and, is all about. You know, well, let's go ahead and do that. story. That's that's fine. No, no, you're doing fine, man. Um, uh, Doug, can you go ahead and hit the uh, picture of Matt's trike? And let's, uh, Doug. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, so go ahead, Matt, and and tell us a little bit about. Uh, you see the. That's a HP Velotechnic uh, Scorpion there, and then um, oh, go ahead. Why don't you Why don't you click on me, and, and then uh, I'll I'll screen share my video here. That sounds fun. Well, okay, wait a minute. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's not do that just yet because I want to oh, get to okay. all the specifics later. I just want to yeah, just tell me a little bit. Tell us about um, tell us about uh, TerraCycle products that are on your your trike. Oh, then we'll go ahead. I, I think that uh, beyond the trike the trike itself the. Uh, uh, the TerraCycle accessories are just a really critical component of uh, of my trike setup, and uh, there's a whole there's a peppering of uh, T-Cycle products on there. We've got the uh, and I'm going to put a link on the on the chat there uh, for uh, for the the YouTube link, and then you can click on that. I got a bunch of videos there that go over the different T-Cycle stuff that I have. Um, Absolutely, and, and we put all the links, whatever we mention here, yeah, of course, like you do, we put all the links in the description of our videos, so they'll have cool. that if necessary. That's great. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so uh, let's see. I've got the um, cockpit mount, which uh, I actually use as, as the main uh, accessory that mounts my GPS uh, Garmin 1000 Edge mm -hmm. and my phone. Um, and the, the great thing about uh, TerraCycle stuff is, is, first, it's really good quality. Um, secondly, it's it's put together in such a way that, like I've used some some hardware where you tighten it down and you feel like it's it just doesn't hug the tubing or it doesn't hug the the components that it mounts to quite quite as well. And then the T cycle stuff just is top notch. So if you look at that the the, the picture there of my trike, you can see that on the left hand side there's that that large cockpit mount T T bar, and then uh, I've got the uh, side seat mount that mounts those two Arkle bags on either side, which are really, really, uh, I mean, I've got high capacity Arkle bags that are waterproof and, and they're a bit overkill for your average rider. But for me, carrying hard drives and cameras and drones and things like that, it's important that I have those things right next to me all the time while I'm, while I'm cruising so I can access them. And uh, so the mounting system for that is from T-Cycle as well, and I've uh, it, it mounts to the back of my HP seat, and they actually have a, a bunch of different uh, mount, mounting systems for ice strikes and different things, but they sent me the one for my specific uh, Scorpion. Uh, some, some other things that are a little bit unique is uh, the, he has these things called T-bars that are designed to fit on top of your handlebars and allow you to maybe mount your ride computer or different things. <laughs> And what I've done is actually uh, made them into, uh, basically, you have your, your wrist rest that goes right there. And then you grab that T-bar and it creates a really nice resting position so that when, you, when you're riding down the road, it has just a really, really relaxed setup. So that, uh, because when you're riding eight hours a day and you're planning to ride around the world, you don't want to have, I, I don't want to have any point of discomfort. I want to have a really nice ride. It's one of the reasons I chose, chose a trike in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I mean, T-Cycle, I got T-Cycle components and clasps and clamps all over my trike, and uh, Pat over there has been really great. That's super. All right, I'm having a little difficult with the slideshow here, but we're going to have it fixed up in just a second. Let's, uh, 
let's go on to some questions that uh, that don't require pictures anyways man i want to go back a ways and uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh Macalat before jayo let's talk about um your your uh the, where you grew up and your education and that sort of thing i'll take us to that and and get us to china Ooh. and and keep, keep okay. in mind we only want to do about three hours today so yeah, okay, if you okay. can, thumbnail it for me buddy if you've seen my vlogs you know i could talk so yeah, that's fine i appreciate it okay uh, i grew up in south uh, uh in southeast detroit um southeast michigan um uh, i'm there actually as we speak with my new daughter it's her first first birthday a couple of days ago so we came back home uh, which is why i've been able to me to, to talk to you today um um, my dad is a, a tinker, a tradesman, and uh, a hands-on kind of guy, and so in doing so, he's kind of inspired me to build a better mousetrap with whatever I do, and living in downtown Detroit uh, with all the manufacturing here for the automotive industry, it's very easy to find people to make those things that you might have ideas about. So I had an idea for a product. It's a whole separate story, and we can get into some other time. Uh, but I produced this product in downtown Detroit when I was 16 years old. I was going door to door to factories to try to find somebody to make it. And uh, when I produced this thing, I, uh, I spent a lot of money. My dad refinanced his house and uh, to help me to uh, afford my dream of, of becoming a successful entrepreneur. That was my goal in life, pretty much. And so I produced this let's call it a, a widget. It was a little antenna, a little accessory for your automotive car antenna uh, called an antenna acrobat. And uh, this is a little goofy novelty. And so I produced this thing, I molded it, I did it all myself, and I did it through factories here in Detroit. And what I found out was I priced myself out of my own market by, and, and I'm not trying to, uh, if you're gonna produce a product in America, that's fantastic. And America makes really high quality stuff, but what I was making was a small plastic promotional product that in essence should have sold for about 20 cents a piece. But my manufacturing cost by producing it here was like $1.50 a piece. So I had a really neat idea and I produced this idea, but I couldn't sell it because no one would buy it because the manufacturing price by the end was so high. And so um, long story short, it taught me about China and the fact that you can get things produced over there extremely cost effectively. And even with shipping it from China to here, I was, uh, my, my, my unit price on those things was around seven cents. I went from like $1.50 to like seven cents. It was, it was, it was, it wasn't even like, Matt, you should have looked a little harder to find out how to make it in America. That type of product was made for China. And so through that lesson, I started to do more business in China, and people knew that I had that I had figured out how to get things made over there. So more and more people came to me, and eventually, I I had a business, and this business was manufacturing things in China and helping people to you know bring their products to market. And you know not not all of their products were done over in China, but uh, I was helping them with those smaller components, and uh, I ended up doing a lot of things. I, I lived on a yacht in the Caribbean and I was a firefighter in downtown Detroit and, and in, in all in this side business trying to support my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial effort, efforts making these products. Uh, basically, uh, I had moved around and I lived in Vegas for a while. I was doing business for the casinos and my business failed completely because there was a problem with one of my products, one of my biggest orders I ever had and the China failed me. And I had to, I basically was left with a decision to either move to China or allow that failure to consume me and quit and do something. What my, my grandpa was always encouraging me, get a, get a stable job with a paycheck. You know, this, this entrepreneurial course, thing yeah. is hard, you know. So um, I, uh, I decided the riskier move and I sold my house and said to my girlfriend, uh, love you, but I gotta go on my way, and, <laughs> and uh, severed all my ties, and with very little money in my pocket, moved to China. And uh, I promised myself that I would try to get a handle on my business. I would do my best to stay in China and not return for five years, because I felt like if, if you went to China and didn't stick it out, you wouldn't get past the hump. And I, I knew that I was gonna get some sort of a pushback and some restrictions and some difficulties and and I felt like if you didn't give yourself enough time to get over that and 
and really like work through the problems, you give up too soon. I always feel like people give up too soon just before they reach that, you know, they get to that diamond in the mine, you know. So uh, I, I, wait, I said I was going to give myself five years and thank God I did because I didn't really achieve true success and, and get through all those boundaries until like two and a half years in. Um, and, and by that two and a half year point, not only did I figure out that business wasn't necessarily as important as what I thought it was to my end goal of living a happy life, but um, travel and videography was like this whole new realm of, of passion that I never really realized I had until I moved to China. And so I realized I produced a TV show in, in, in China, and I was a host of a, of a show called The Ningbo Focus. You can see that on my channel. It was out to seven million people in in the in the province watched my uh, watched my show, and I was the host of the show, and I was doing all these things that were so distant from my entrepreneurial right uh, doing my business life in America that I was like, wow, there's so many opportunities here. And then I started traveling different places, going to Malaysia and Indonesia, and I'm like, wow, Indonesia is totally different from China. China is totally different from America, and New Zealand is totally different from. And there's all these different places with all these different things, and I started thinking. Uh, wow, well, I, I want to explore. Okay, I'll let you take That's, that from here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I forgot what my question was. Oh, right. Uh, so. That's great, and you were a, and you learned to speak Chinese like when you first got over there. You did a Chinese show, and how did you I know to speak Chinese? I didn't know any show. Uh, I didn't know any Chinese when I moved to China. I, I knew basically the ni hao, which is hello, and xie xie, which is thank you. But one of the most complicated sentences I knew, and I, I and I'd studied this one sentence so so diligently before I, I went to China was wo shuo de bu hao. And wa shua da buhao is I speak not well, literally. <laughs> I speak not well. So it was funny because the best and clearest sentence that I could speak so perfectly, it was almost natural, was I speak not well, which tripped everybody up in China because they're like, well, you sound like you speak fine. <laughs> you said kind you don't of, speak well. Kind of really ironic, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's that's great. That gets us that gets us to you and and in China. Now, I, we want to catch up to the beginnings of, of Jaiyo. So uh, I, I, it seems to me from, from what I've seen of you that uh, this Jaiyo idea was kind of an inspiration. I don't know if it was an epiphany, but it was some sort of inspiration. And I'm really interested in knowing how did that come about? Okay. Well, originally, I was supposed to take the, the, the what was the predecessor to the Jaiyo World Tour. I was supposed to take it with my best friend, Ryan. Which you know, Gary, and, and those of you that know me way back, you've you've seen Ryan in my in my life and in my journey. He's my best friend. He was a uh, he is an English teacher, well, was an English teacher in China in Ningbo, where I live. And I met him at a party, and we became really fast friends. He's the reason I'm doing this whole thing, really. I mean, he was the guy that kind of was happy-go-lucky, didn't really care about becoming rich like I did. He was more interested in living a fulfilling life, and uh, we would take these little trips where we would go to the train station in China, and neither of us could read Chinese. And we'd walk into the train station, or the bus station it was, and we'd point up to the, they had a huge screen with all of Chinese cities, and the timing of the tickets, and, the, and, the, and when they left for, for whatever uh, whatever tour they were on, uh, to, uh, to and, and, and then we would pick a place. Didn't even matter what it was. We just okay. Let's try here. And so we we called them the rogue rogue journeys because we were we were doing the rogue thing. We were just going. We didn't have money. We didn't have a pre plan. We would spend the weekend at this strange place and try to make the best of it. And it and wow, that was just so enriching and so exciting and so fun because we'd meet locals and because we didn't have a plan, we had to rely on hey asking people hey what's a nice place here and, and translating through our phones and and just the. The, the, the journey and the trials of a journey like that made me like intoxicated with the, the idea of traveling. And so the original journey when we started to plan the world tour was called the Rogue Life Adventure. And um, so Rogue Life was like the original, before Jaya was Rogue Life. And uh, I was about to trademark it. Ryan was not business minded like like I am. So he wanted to just travel. I wanted like the brand and I wanted to, ex to promote the message. And even before vlogging, it was just the travel, but it was still more than just travel. It was like 
the idea to express ourselves in a unique way. You got to have a, a mantra, right? You got to have for you a, for you, a, Matt. Then yeah. right from the pretty much from the beginning, though, you were all about doing um, a daily vlog or at least documenting this thing. No, I mean uh, before. I mean, I remember me and Ryan were sitting in a coffee shop and we were talking about. Uh, what we should do with this journey and how maybe because Ryan knew English and his vehicle for travel was going from school to school and saying I'm an English teacher can you give me a place to stay or give me some money and working working around the world using English but what, what did I have you know at that point in time I was doing the show and I was doing some video work and I was like well you know I could probably do I could probably do videos for hotels and resorts and places along the way. It wasn't a vlog, it was more like commercial videos. Like I could do a video for you, can you help me out? I could do a video for you, can you help me out? Just using that as a way to travel. And, uh, but, but what happened was, Ryan ended up falling off the journey, that's a whole separate story. We kind of had some, um, it wasn't, I don't want to get into it. I mean, me and Ryan, we separated on good terms, but he ended up not going on this on this tour. And I was in L.A. and I was about to secure the trademark for Rogue Life, and it turned out that there was a Rogue Life in California that is this huge production company that does stuff for like uh, for like HBO. And no way I could have used that. So I'm sitting down and I'm like, you know, Rogue was such a, an important thing for me, and I'm like, I, I wanted to think of something better. And thank God because it was kind of like sitting there, and I'm like, you know. I'm traveling. I'm going to be traveling around the world. I'm, I'm adding uh, value to my life by traveling, and this is the fuel that I've 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 enriched myself with. This is the energy, the the power of traveling and doing what you love and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, there's no real word in English that fit it. And I was trying to think of something like a Google or a Kleenex or a my own word, you know, something mm -hmm. that that I could get behind that was its its own thing. And then I thought, well, there's there's a lot of interesting Chinese words, and one of the first words that you hear in China. If you're, you know, living exciting or you're doing something cool, you hear people encouraging you with this phrase "jiao," and uh, "jia" in Chinese means to add, and "yo" means oil or fuel, and you combine them and you say "add fuel," and originally, literally, it means to add fuel to your car. Like uh, if I'm driving down the road and you look and you see your car's on E, you you, you pull up to the gas station and you yell to the guy. Because it's all so it's not self serve there it's all full service you go jio jio and the, you know they say what 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 octane do you want and, you know how much money do you have you know and, and, and so and so and so and so forth but, but it completely took on a new meaning for you and uh, and yeah. it became uh, became really the, the 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 phrase that you that you say on every video and yeah, means yeah. everything to what you do so and it's perfect. Are, it is perfect, I think. I think it is. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about uh, your attempts. The the you you decided to then go on your own and and, and planned for this uh, world tour. Um, and let's talk about each one if we can, starting at sure. the first one. Tell me tell me uh, briefly about the planning stage, and then tell me uh, about the beginning and what happened during that uh, that uh, attempt. Okay. Originally, I wanted to go to Lhasa. Me and Ryan were going to do that together. Lhasa is like a uh, like a Tibetan in the Tibetan area of of uh, of China. It's a it's like a, you cr basically cross the whole country, and uh, I thought that was going to be a really cool journey. But it was like a month or two months you'd ride through, um, <laughs> and so uh, what ended up happening was uh, I kept growing and growing, and I ended up saying, you know. I had a bucket list. I made myself a bucket list and I connected points around the world that coincided with areas where I could check off points on my bucket list. And it ended up circumventing the world. And I was like, wow, shit, maybe I should just go all the way around the world. And uh, so I did. And I started in August uh, of 2014, uh, leaving from Ningbo, headed south. And the objective was to ride south and then around through Southeast Asia, come up into Nepal and climb Mount Everest. And then Mount Everest was like number one on my bucket list. And it was gonna be like the pinnacle uh, of a uh, pinnacle point of, of the, the tour. And so I was on my way and I had the Jayo version one trike where it was a black scorpion. I had a trailer and I was riding south and I got about 3000 kilometers, 3500 kilometers into it. I was uh, riding from Guangzhou to uh, Guilin 
I was halfway through. I was on a small windy road on the on the shoulder, riding down with my earphones in, enjoying life, and and a box truck, not a big box truck, like a mini box truck, like a transportation truck, came up from behind and just uh, took me took me off the tour pretty quick. And yeah. Go ahead yeah. and uh, Doug, can you uh, pop that shot back up there again? You can yeah. see, yeah. <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever the recorder of events, no matter yeah. what. Uh, I can't. This is amazing to me. So, yeah, tell me, tell me your, uh, tell me what your experience, what you remembered in of that day. Well, I mean, I was. Uh, it was rainy. The street was wet, and uh, and and so I mean, it was a little bit slippery that day. I remember, and it was a countryside ride. It wasn't. You know, normally my, my ears are perked when I'm going through urban environments and, and you're riding down busy streets and you're kind of like, you're a little bit more aware, but this was more just a winding country road through fairly sparsely populated areas. And uh, I ended up um, riding uh, uh, around the curve. I was by a gas station and this truck uh, came up from behind. It came off the shoulder. So... He wasn't paying attention. I could have been a pink elephant, you know, riding a trike or anything, and it would have still hit the, hit that object, and it just, that object just happened to be me. Luckily, though, um, it hit the trailer, which had my clothes, and it was stocked with a bunch of stuff, and that trailer uh, was like a cushion and pushed the trike, and the trike ended up going off to the side. We and got a shot of that, uh, Doug. You want to? Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. The trailer saved my life, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, or saved me from some serious, more serious injuries, of course. And uh, so the trike ended up getting damaged. I flew off to the, uh, to the shoulder, and we both tumbled. And I'll tell you what, being in that trike, that trike is almost like a roll cage. And when I was tumbling down the road, I actually rotated, I think, I don't remember because it was so fast, but I think I, I, I tumbled about three times, and I stayed in my seat the whole time. I ended up laying next to the trike, and in the end, I flopped out. But for the most part, I think being uh, inside that trike, if I was on a bike, I would have flown off the seat, you know, and I would have been ejected from my bike. But me and the trike, we stayed together. And I think Yeah, you might have been the- ejected back into the truck even. Who knows about right, that? Right, so. right, right. All right, so um, you sustained some injuries. What, what, tell me about yeah. your injuries. Well, that's it now. You can see just a yeah, hang on. Let's, uh, Doug, go ahead back to him for a second. We'll away from, yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, see. Just, live just shot there. Yeah? Yeah. I got a nice scar. <laughs> I so broken, a, broken bones, right? Broken broken bones in a few places. And uh, I have a steel plate there with nine screws and, and a couple of pins. And I had all the surgery done in China. Uh, yeah, back and, to that picture, Doug, if you would. Uh, there you go. So... And you became yeah. a minor celebrity there, I guess. Huh? Yeah, that was the mayor of the village, and that was like nine or ten o'clock at night. So they called him in to uh, say, "Hey, there's a foreigner in the hospital. You guys, you should come and check him out." You know, so they came, and uh, I mean, not only was I a foreigner, but I was riding this strange contraption, which was kind of crazy, right? And so, yep, yep. And so uh, I, uh, the mayor came. They took my picture, and they were they treated me really well. When you're a foreigner in China. You, you get kind of like an elevated level of treatment from everybody, which is, it's, you know, I could say it's, it's somewhat positive discrimination, you could say, but I'll take it, you know. Well, sometimes, uh, it, yeah, sometimes you need that advantage, don't you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, then, so that was the end of that. And yep. then uh, the planning began on number two. So you, you really didn't, cons- did you consider that was it? You're not going to do this or did you not oh. ever get it? You watch a video, I'm, I'm explaining while I'm laying on the road that this is just a, a, this is a speed bump. <laughs> we got to get over the speed bump, you know. And so I, uh, I, I instantly, while I was laying in the, in the bed, I was thinking, okay, what do I need to do to restart this thing? And uh, I, I had the surgery. There was a bunch of, like, uh, recouping from that and therapy and whatnot. Uh, the big thing was the destruction of the trike, you know, because I had flown to Germany to build it through HP. And, and l- luckily, it was odd that I have hard drives and things in that trailer, and I had tripods and stuff, and all of it was fairly intact. And I didn't really lose anything, even though it was scattered all over the street. So I didn't really have to re-equip on equipment, but I did have to get a new trike. So I, I uh, fixed my shoulder, went through all of, all of that. As soon as I was able, I flew out to Germany. Rebuilt uh, the tiger. Rebuilt the tiger duck. We ended up calling it the, the guys at HP call it the tiger duck because there's a 
there's a uh, cartoon character for children that's called a tiger duck. You guys look it up online. It's kind of funny. It looks just like my uh, my trike if you look for tiger duck. And um, I decided on yellow for more visibility. And uh, um, I, I definitely reach. We, we could talk a whole laid back bike report on trailers, but I'm not. Unless you really want to know, I mean, we. I, I well, went through I, I do, but I think we have trailers. so much else to cover. Yeah, let's, right. let's let's move along if we can. So then, number two. Then let's see if I have this correct. I've got a shot here. There's not a lot of info on number two, to be honest. Yeah, I don't really. It, so, but that was you and Ryan, right? Yeah, yeah. Back into the picture, and you decided. Just tell us real briefly about what that setup was. Okay, he found a Trident trike that was being sold in Shanghai. I think it was a factory that makes Trident trikes, and then they were selling some of their own Trident trikes through some Shanghai website. So we were able to pick him up one, and uh, so he wanted to ride a trike with my trike, so that we were like dual trikers. And we started riding south, and uh, I was doing some heavy training for Mount Everest. And the plan for us was to ride as south as far as we could until I needed to leave to climb Mount Everest. And you can see there, I have, I have the, uh, uh, in that picture there. I, yeah, I go ahead the, and hit that, Doug, if, can you? That's I have the belt, I have my belt top. I was fully loaded. The trailer there was extremely heavy. The trailer weighed 85 kilos. I'm sorry, guys. You're going to have to use the conversions on that. 85 kilos is super fine, heavy. That's fine. And uh, he, he was using my Ortley bags. I had my Arkle bags. And, uh, and so we were going as a team, and we were riding south. And uh, unfortunately, along the way, I felt some real problems with my knee. And it was really frustrating. I've got some amazing video that I have yet to produce of me going through the trials of that. And uh, I, uh, Ryan was trying to push me a little bit, you know, go on, Matt, you can do it, you can do it, and supporting me. But it got to the point to where we had to take some pauses and we went to the doctor. My, my knee felt like, like a bag of rice. You ever have a bag of rice and you crunch it in your hands and you can feel like all of the, the rice rubbing up against each other? That was what my knee felt like. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> sound pleasant. Yeah, so we went to the doctors. They told me I needed orthoscopic surgery. I said, hell no, I'm calling an Everest, and that would just kill my Everest expedition. Mm -hmm. So I did. I quit, the, I quit the ride. It only lasted like a month. I was on the road, and then I had to stop again. Ryan ended up going back to L.A., which I wish he would have continued on. He had a trike in China all set up and rigged up, and I, I encouraged him. I said, I, I can't do this anymore, but you're all set up. You can keep going. He said no and ended up leaving and going back to L.A. and marrying his girlfriend and his bunch of stuff. And his life is, is on a whole other path, which is great. And besides but, yeah, the uh, vlogs at the time, I think that you also tried out some uh, podcasts, you and, you and he, did, did you not? Yeah, yeah, you know what, I, I, I like to dip my toe in a lot of different types of water, you know, so I was doing, uh, I was doing a lot more uh, uh, Facebook videos and trying to do more like little clips along the way, and, and I was also trying to do like uh, a, a podcast where I did an audio podcast with, I had a really nice microphones, and my, my idea was to interview travelers as we got around the world, and I think I got up to about 40 episodes of that of that podcast and you can check out that podcast on jaya.com if you want to listen to some of the some of the ones from way back yeah um, matt there's a question on um on live chat here it kind of uh, goes back to that i think the first uh the first trike so uh, one of the pictures that we had that one we showed with ryan uh, shows uh that canopy on mm -hmm. on your trike uh was that canopy in place when you uh, got hit i don't think it was yeah it was raining that day Oh, so yeah. the guy was wondering if maybe that's what helped to keep you. Uh, yeah, you don't know, but I mean, that's that's it's possible. possible. It's possible. Yeah. But that's gone now. That's not part of the current kit. And we're going to get at this point. Let's go ahead and and okay. jump forward a little onto your current tour, uh, yeah. which is going very successfully, as far as I can tell. Very interesting stuff. <laughs> and uh, let's talk uh, in general first of all about uh, your change in philosophy now. Uh, how your trike has evolved from that. Uh, trailer and 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 loading everything you could load on it seems like canopy everything to uh, traveling much lighter and making uh, I'm sure some sacrifices tell me about riding heavy versus riding light and what your thinking was about that well in my mind I don't mind riding heavy uh, riding heavy wasn't wasn't an issue with speed it, it, I would have gone two miles an hour it was no problem uh, and and so what I did is I thought I wanted to carry a musical instrument. I played some Chinese instruments. I wanted to carry all the video equipment. I wanted to carry my drone. I, at the time, my video equipment was much heavier than it is now. It was a big DSLR camera with a 
with this big heavy lenses. I had four lenses that I carried around with me. I had tripods for that camera, and I had clothing, and I had you know. Yeah, go ahead and hit that shot. Of the, of yeah, the thing. crazy. Okay, that's that's yeah. version number one. That's version number one. You can yeah. see that actually there's no drone in there. Uh, <laughs> that 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 is just version number one. Me riding around those those Ortley bags that I had were. Uh, were great, but the problem with my Ortley bags was that my laptop is, is like uh, wouldn't quite fit quite well, and I had a lot of boxy things that I carried with me, and those Ortley bags weren't quite the best for that. So I ended up switching to the Ar Arkle, uh, what are those ND sixties or something, RD sixties, whatever. You guys know what know those, those. Anybody that knows Arkles knows those Rakuma, uh, Rakuma bags. Oh, what's that? What is that picture? That, okay, that's my this, yeah. This, that's my we'll current setup. That's we my are so setup. that yeah. So so now now you've made some decisions, or when you got to this last ride, you made some big decisions about what you're going to do. Tell me why and and what you did. Okay, in so okay, real quick. So I had it. I had my first setup 1.0, the red trailer and everything. Then the second setup, I actually went more. I my my new trailer was was a, a I do trailer I got from. From Europe, it was amazing. I spent a lot of money on it. The, tra the trailer itself was decked out, and it was much heavier. And I was like, "I'll go slower. It doesn't even matter. I just want to travel around the world my way." But then the knee problem presented itself, and you can't find a find a health problem. You know, you can't you can't psych yourself out into that. You know, and and and, and so I had to make some decisions. So when we came to this version number three, I actually decided to go ultra light or it's not really ultra light for everybody but it's ultra light for me because because some people could go much more ultra light than I have gone ultra light but but my, my my essence was I want to go as light as I can while still filming videos so um, you <laughs> know just take a look at this latest trike here that this is from your current tour this is what yeah. we're talking about mm -hmm. yeah there we go so uh, streamlined I got rid of the trailer but I've added two heavy side bags uh, to compensate for uh, easy access to equipment. I've got the uh, Ortley bags that are about 80% full. There's a little room in there for when I get to warmer or colder weather areas. And I strap my backpack to the back. Uh, the interesting thing there is that the new drones out there allow you to carry, like I, I had a Phantom on my second version of Trike. And, uh, and that one was a bit bigger, and now they make them so small you can kind of fit them in, in your Yeah, in your we're going to take bag. a second and talk about your drones, I think, in a little bit. We're going to get to some of your equipment. Let me uh, – let's let's move along now and talk about what – so you've got, we've got all the bags. We've talked about the trailers now. What is it that you put in uh, the bags and the trailers? What are you carrying with you? So let's uh, – can we start with – you mentioned the, the drones, the cameras. Let's let's start with your electronics if we can. And I know you okay. have some of it right there. You want to yep, yep. talk about maybe the camera? Sure, sure. Um, originally – and this is not the original camera that I took before, but this is an example of a DSLR, okay? Now, this is a Canon 80D. I filmed a bunch of vlogs on it. It has a flip-out screen that you can see yourself. And uh, so, so this is – this is about half the size of my original camera, which was the Canon 5D Mark III. And so I, I was using this for a while, but then I started using this. And you can see that it's, it's downgrading size to, to an extreme. If you, if you guys watch my vlogs at all, this is the camera that I shoot everything on. And the cool thing about it is it has a screen that can flip forward, which allows me to see myself very clearly. I can flip it back and flip it down, so I can look from down, looking up, and the zoom on it is 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 quite good. I mean, this camera is a fantastic camera, and people that do the daily vlogs like I do uh, utilize cameras like this quite a, quite a bit. So, um, and the audio on it is pretty good. A wind noise could be better, but I'm sure everybody that watch that tries to produce videos while they're riding experiences right, right. that. So that's that's my camera. Um, okay. Now, the computer, obviously, is this computer right here that I'm working on as a, as a MacBook uh, Pro. But uh, another th important thing when you're filming a video every day is uh, data. And uh, I carry uh, three four-terabyte hard drives. And today, they make them so small. Look at how light this thing is. It's incredible that I can carry 12 terabytes on me. If I went on the version 1 trike, and, and, and I did carry this much, but they were like, 
this was one hard drive. <laughs> Right. What a wonderful convergence of technology for you, it's Matt, that, you know, that allows you to do what you do now. So, um, then, Matt, do you look down at the film strip for a second? Do you see me yeah. or do you see yeah, it? Like? I, I see it. All right. All right. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, so then um, I don't have the Phantom, but this is the Mavic, and this is the drone that if you see my videos, you'll see me flying. This is the guy that's, that's doing it. And so basically it's a companion of, of the drone itself and the controller. The controller uses the cell phone that I have, my iPhone, as its as its LCD, and which and, and that's so nice because you don't have to carry an extra LCD, and, and it's just really streamlined for travel. Plus, this this drone actually folds down and allows you to um, carry it. It's it's nice because the propellers and everything are actually encased, and then I put it in a little box here, right. and uh, and then and that's it. Now. Now the funny thing is that I just got this, which is a Spark, <laughs> and this is a this is a pretty good drone. Films in HD, and uh, size comparison wise, I mean you could see there's a, just a it's an it's a it's a reduced size compared to the the Mavic, which in itself is super small. So, right. You know. I guess my uh, my understanding is it's got a, a two axis gimbal as opposed to a three axis gimbal. Which I don't know. Do you do you think that's going to make a difference as far I as I don't think so. The, the the drone itself, the drone itself is a stabilizer. You know what I mean? These yes. these these yes. propellers are keeping it stabilized. So right. you don't necessarily need that third stabilization because the drone itself is. That thing. Isn't relatively stable. And, and let me just, I've got to stop you here, Matt, and talk yeah. about your drone footage. Because you can talk about the drones all you want. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, if there are anybody, if there's anybody within the sound of our voices right now who has not watched any of Matt's vlogs, if for no other reason, Please go look at the, the, the vlogs that he has posted from South Korea and Japan especially and take a look at the video that he shoots while he's riding his trike. I don't honestly, I don't know how he controls it the way he does. And zooming in from, I don't know, a thousand feet down to like where he is, bridge uh, crossing, you know, uh, mountains on either side, coastlines. Uh, words cannot begin to do justice to yeah, he'll, he'll probably show you a little bit here. Just there you go. Birds flying into the sky. I don't <laughs> that know almost how. that almost clipped the drone actually. Really, you know? that would have been great. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Thanks for yeah. Uh, because yeah. Uh, now you're just seeing. Uh, if you're watching now through the hangout, you you're just seeing like kind of clip frames, but you get the idea. Um, yeah. it, it is so worthwhile, Matt. Um, I think it, I think that this is something that no one else is really doing, and I think this is something you do spectacularly. So okay. tell me, uh, tell me, uh, do you feel like you're getting better at this, and, and do you like doing that part of it? Tell me about that. Oh, my God. You know, I, uh, doing videos is a passion that I, I've kind of found myself in, in, in China, you know, so it's fairly recent, you know, within the last 10 years. But uh, to be able to produce your own project, like I, I did this TV show in China, and uh, I, was, um, I was responsible for the show, but I was working underneath the network in China. So they would view my end product and say, you know what, you need to make this shorter, you need to make this longer, you need to include this information and that. And they dictated to me what my art was. And, you know, I don't want to, I'm not like an artiste, but, you know, our, our project, what we, what, this is your art, the L Laid Back Bike Report is your art, you know. And, um, and the vlogs... And YouTube allow you to do something without connection to any sort of um, uh, over overwatching. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, there's there's nobody that's telling you what to do. And if you do a bad job, it's your fault. If you do a good job, you get the credit. And you know what? If the vlog is bad, tomorrow will be better. And so I I continue to to do it every day. And, and I'm on number 385 now. I've made 385 videos. It's a crazy amount of content. That I've produced, and and if you didn't enjoy it, you would think that this is hell. But I enjoy it so much, and and it's I feel like I'm living the dream. And and, and hopefully, if I can continue writing, I'm not going to put if. Let's take the if out. Hopefully, as I continue writing, my my channel grows. I can actually start to support myself financially through the YouTube content, and then I can actually produce the videos in the way that I want to produce every day, and, and continually perpetuate perpetuate myself through the financing that I get from those videos that I love to make. I, I, mean, sure I hope you, yeah, I sure hope you get there, man. I think that. you're 
very much deserving of that. The content that you, the content that you create is is spectacular. I'm going to stop talking because people have to see it, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's, it's, it's really well worthwhile. So uh, we can't talk about that enough. All right, let's let's move on. How about uh, what do you use like to 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 guide yourself around uh, GPS wise, uh, Google Maps? What do you? I heard you talk on one of your uh, heard you talk on uh, w one of your vlogs like you are addicted to seeing where you are every minute. But tell us about uh, guidance. Well, um, it depends on what country you're in. For example, uh, in China, you can't use Google unless you're on a VPN, and it looks like they might even block those pretty soon. And uh, uh, in Korea, uh, even Apple Maps and Google weren't working, and you had to get Korean. I had to like navigate through Korea with Korean characters everywhere. Like I didn't know I couldn't read Korean, and I just kind of had to figure out that a gas station was a gas symbol, and you know, like you kind of had to figure it out that way. Um, but in Japan, I ran into a couple of, uh, they were from um, not Sweden. Anyways, they were, Euro they were Europeans, and I was cycling with them, great people. And, and they said, you've got to check out this MapOut program. And, and MapOut uh, is an amazing program. That, that's the emblem for it right there, MapOut. Turn it a little bit, Matt. It's kind of shiny. Okay, okay, I'm trying. Get a little uh, reflection there. There we go. Yep. It, it's white, though. You can't really see. Anyways. Yeah. We'll put a link to it. it okay. This is a great, great app because what it does is it puts really, really high quality updated maps on your phone that you can follow without needing a connection to any uh, Wi-Fi or anything. It uses the GPS and it allows you to map out your path for the day or or map out like an entire country and then a lot, you can follow that path by sections as you ride through that country. It, it's, I'm, I can't talk about it highly enough, to be honest. It is. Yeah, I heard you talking. So, okay, yeah, we will amazing. we will let people see that link too. That's yeah. great. All right, let's. Um, you know, we talked uh, when we were setting up the program, uh, Matt, uh, about telling people a little bit more about what you go through on a daily basis. So let's, we've seen uh, we've seen the drones and your cameras, and and we've seen the a little bit of your footage from way above and all that stuff. But I don't think people really have a good handle on what it takes to do that first of all you're writing during the day and you are photographing yourself going by on the road that doesn't just happen you don't have people stationed you do that yourself so you obviously have to stop you have to stop when you do the uh, the drone shots and send up the drone and retrieve and all that stuff tell us more specifically i'm interested to know what you have to go through during the day on your rides just to uh, to, to do that and then I also want to know about a little bit about the process of uh, of Producing the videos which you have to take time to do uh, out of your trip when you're stopped. Let me know about the okay. process Okay, ideally um, I can produce a, the vlog the day that I live it right so uh, I don't off Sometimes I can't quite finish it the day of but but let, uh, let's just give you the, 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 the way that I do it so I wake up in the morning and I try and be out on the road on an ordinary day that I'm riding around uh, eight or nine o'clock. And uh, I I don't ride very fast. I ride uh, between you know uh, fifteen to twenty kilometers an hour. Um, and uh, you know obviously on the downhills you go higher, faster on the on the inclines you go slower. So, you know. And um, uh, as I as as I travel, I have the drones is always sitting in my side back. And my camera is always sitting in the side back, so I have access to cameras at all times. And so I'm. Some people actually told me, you know, you kind of remove yourself from the journey by forcing yourself to record all this. And I feel like that's totally the opposite because my eyes are more open to different things that I can capture for the story of the day because I have to make sure by the end of the day I have enough content to make something somewhat interesting at least. So whether that's a narration of my thoughts or, or capturing a tree or capturing an uh, interaction with a local. I, so it may I'm, make you more observant as you ride as well, right? You're always looking for, when you're looking for the shot, you're looking at things. You're looking at yeah. what you're going by, which may escape people just uh, touring around. Yeah, yeah. And I, so it's an elevated uh, awareness of what's going uh -huh. on around you. So, so I'm, I'm always in it. If, if, uh, I always try to do uh, a drone shot in the, in the morning because I'm always thinking that if I do go through the whole day and I end up not seeing something, then I'll kick myself for not flying the drone at least once. So I, tr I try to fly the drone at least within the first hour of my day riding, no matter what. Sometimes there's a lot of footage you never see. 
There's a lot of stuff that you never see because I never used it in the vlog at the end of the day, but at least I had it. And so um, I'm recording throughout the day. I normally record uh, on an average about an hour of content every day. So for that 10 minute video that you watch or whatever, I normally have about an hour of, of, of video that, that start, I start with. So I record, 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 and at the end, uh, around maybe three or four o'clock, I start thinking about where I am at the point in time. I rarely pick a place to stay at the end of the day. Normally, I just play it by ear. As far as I am, I, I end up saying, okay, there's a city within 10 more kilometers. That's about how much I can ride at this pace, and I'll find a place and that, to get there. That always shows up, or almost always shows up on, on the vlog, too. It's, a, it's part of the excitement, I think. You know, where's yeah. he going to end up staying tonight? And you know what? So you end up camping rarely, but I saw a couple of, of camping occasions. And then the places that you end up finding on a moment's notice – Seem to be maybe your 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 best night stay of any of, of anything that you stay of any place that you stay. The randomness is uh, in itself amazing, and uh, th I mean, like, if you plan, if you plan too much, it ends up hurting you in the end, in my opinion. In a lot of cases, at least at least the way that I travel. So, um, and and like when you said the tents, uh, when I tent it, I can't edit, you know. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love to tent and I love to camp, but ideally, I like to find a roof over my head with Wi-Fi, you know, because that's, that's what I need in order to fulfill the purpose of my vlog, which is the underlying uh, storyline of my whole journey is, is being able to share it through video. Of course. So, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, a really good, that's a really good assessment of what you do. I'm yeah. glad you're able to share that. All right, um, back to the live chat. Um, one of the uh, good friends of the show who we actually – uh, we did a little interview with them while they were in uh, South Korea or Japan. I think they were in Japan, and they were there almost the same time as you, and I think you might have contacted them. Julie Lovegrove and Mark is her husband. Uh, oh. Hi, Matt. Great to see you on the show. Our paths almost crossed in Japan. Hope we will meet up with you on the road one day. Keep on triking. So there's a oh, little. Oh, can I show you somebody? Can I show you somebody? Yeah, yeah, of course. Dinker Dinker is awake. There we go. Who is Say that, hi. Matt? This is this is Eva Rose. Her name is uh, Chinese name is Wang Jiayue. Hey. <laughs> oh, she froze up in front of the camera. How about that? And is there an occasion uh, yeah. that? Uh... Well, it's it's her first birthday, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very nice she to meet you. From a nap. Yep. Well, I could use one of those right now too. At my age, I probably nap just about the same amount as she does. So, <laughs> it's nice to have her on. Hi, Eva. Okay. All right. Um, Matt, I want to ask you a few uh, what I would call rapid-fire questions, but uh, for you, let's just say a, a couple minutes on each of these if you can. Um, okay. We're going to go with like uh, superlatives here. So, hold on. Hold on. Can I, can I, can I? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because this is really important uh, to Please finish. stop me. At absolutely. the end of the day, I have about four, five to six hours of editing every night to yeah. produce a vlog that I put on YouTube every day. And that's why a lot of my days, I mean, you think there's a recording portion and then there's an editing portion and then there's sleep and then, <laughs> and then that's my process. I, I apologize. I had to put that I in there. Yeah, we, that's really what, what I was even leading up yeah. to and I forgot to actually ask you that. So very, very important. It's, it takes, people don't understand how much time it takes just to edit, let alone doing all the other things that you do. So uh, now you know, folks, that's, that's kind of important. All right, here comes the questions. Can you tell us, What's the funniest moment that you've had so far? What's the funniest thing that you remember? Funniest moment? Gosh. I don't know. Uh, maybe recently, the, the, if you watch the vlog right as I'm leaving Wakanai, um, the host that I was staying at, their hotel, they, the lady had these big speakers and this disco ball that was in the, the bike hostel, the ride hotel. And uh, I didn't realize what it was for until the end of the day when she – she got this uh, karaoke microphone out, which had the reverb all way white. There was only like four travelers in the place, and, and we're sitting in this room, and she pumps it up, and she's talking Japanese, and I'm asking, like, what is she saying? She's, that lady's saying, oh, she's just talking about the hotel rules, that, you know, you're not, you, you turn the lights out at 11 o'clock, and, you know, make sure, blah, blah, blah. She's going, but she's got a disco ball going during the period of time, and ended up, we all got together, and we're singing this Japanese song, and we're, it was... It was yeah. You had your arms was, over each other's shoulders, and you were almost was like a rocket there. You know, it was doing very little... odd. You know, uh, there's a lot <laughs> of moments like that. I didn't know what was going on, but you were into it. I could see. 
you know, when you do this, you just go with the flow as, as much as possible. So hilarious. All right. How about the most awe-inspiring? You've seen some amazing things. What's the most awe-inspiring uh, thing you've seen? I mean, the, on the trike? Yeah, on this trip, say, or in the last in, – Because uh, there's, there's sitting on the trike, and then there's, like, also the awe-inspiring – you know, like, the trike provides me to go to a mountain, which I – like, Rishiri, mm -hmm. and I end up climbing and looking out of, uh, 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 on a 360-degree view on top of a beautiful peak on the top of Hokkaido. You know, those moments are amazing. There's the – it's very difficult to say it. Every day there's an awe-inspiring moment, you know. I guess, you're riding... um, you know, you touched on this, and I, um, I'm guessing that – so riding the trike to get you to uh, climb a mountain or see some amazing scene, that's something special as well, right? I mean, riding the trike adds something to that special moment. Well, I mean, when you're riding the trike, you're in a very relaxed position, and you're not – there's no pain. There's no – Oh, my back hurts. All oh, my ass hurts. I'm tired, and so so. What it does is it allows you because I'm, I'm I go slow. I don't care, and I, and I just take my time, and I'm 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 fully immersed. You know what I mean? So I'm fully immersed in the place that I'm at, and so not. And on top of that, like we were talking about, how I'm I'm fully aware as well because I'm always looking for for the thing to photograph or video or take a video off. So so, just any time I'm, I've got my feet on the pedals, it's sort of awe inspiring. Know? Right. I guess my point is basically that uh, riding the trike to get there adds a lot to the moment, it, as opposed to if you drove there in a car, you flew there in a plane. I, I think it's different. Is that, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Is that you, you earn the moment much more. Exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. You've earned it because you worked, you pedaled there. There's no, right. there's nothing more natural than cycling to a place, maybe walking. There's guys that walk around the world, uh, but that's a little bit, <laughs> that takes a little longer, you know. That's earning it too, but yes, that's, that's the earning point. earning it on a whole different level, you know. But, exactly. uh, All right, yeah. how about, uh, what's the most heartwarming moment? Maybe uh, some moments with people that you've had. What's, what's the most heartwarming moment? I mean, there's so many uh, moments where you connect with people on a level that uh, you, weren't, you weren't expecting. And it just kind of, in a surprising way, that you get some charity on the road. And I mean, I was riding through uh, Wakanai, and uh, I was riding to Wakanai in Hokkaido. Wakanai is the northernmost point of, of Japan. It is the highest point. You can see Russia across the ocean. And uh, I was riding, and, and, and I was not like, I was, I was at, the end, at the end of my day, and I was ready to go. And I, I had the goal in mind to, to find a place to stay. And I, I get to a certain point at the end of my rides where I'm like, screw it. I don't want to, it's in very tunnel vision. And then this kid, this kid is riding his bicycle to my, to my, uh, to my left and, or to my right. And, and I see him out of the corner of my eye and, you know, you get these people, they'll ride with you and they'll, yay, just cheer you on. And he's, he's, he's kind of stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, no, no, I'm almost to, I got to go, buddy. Thanks, thanks. I give him a thumbs up. But he's like, stop, stop, stop. And then he said stop so many times. I was like, okay, okay, okay. What's up, buddy? What, what do you got? And he digs in his backpack. And he pulls out a Coke and he runs and he puts it in my lap. And then he runs away and he gives me like a big thumbs up. And, it, 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 and just, that was it. That was, People that was giving just, you things and being generous, I guess, is, uh, and I've seen a few of those. That's got to be something that really stays with you. It is, it is wonderful. And you get people that'll drive past you in their car and they'll disappear into the sunset and you'll, you'll rendezvous with them later and you'll find out that when they passed you by, that was not just an a, a instant moment. That was a point where they felt like they wanted to do something for you and the road forward so that they could buy something for you so that they could give it to you as, as you pass by. You know, and, and you know, you get these people that pass by you and in ordinary circumstances, you would never see them again. But mm -hmm. in, in, on this tour, you have these connections that form that you would never have formed before. And in, in, in a lot of ways, that's, that's one of the chief reasons that I'm doing this trip and those contacts. Well, you know, that, that kind of gets to my next uh, uh, couple of questions here. And it has to do with someone taking on a, a tour like this or something similar to this. It occurs to me that what stops most people from doing something like this is fear. Um, they consider the unknown to be uh, fearful, to be fearful of the unknown. And I think they think maybe uh, it's, it's dangerous. Do you, having done what you've done so far, do you consider what you do inherently dangerous in some way? 
I don't know. Dangerous is not following your dreams, uh, and then you're living a life of regret. Uh, and I mean, I, I, uh, I, I was that type of person in, you know, before I was motivated by money and I felt like once I had money, then I could do the things that I wanted to do. And I've been successful in China and I've gotten, I'm no, I'm no millionaire. A lot of people might ask me that question. How do you afford to do this journey? And, and I have that it, question actually yeah, a couple yeah, of you, know, you might want to take a second and, and just give us a thumbnail sketch. How, how do you afford to do it? That's what people want to know. I guess you've had it before. Well, I, I, I came to China about a hundred thousand dollars in the hole. Uh, I was in debt like that was I was I was living off of a negative which a lot of Americans and actually live that way you know live off of a negative and uh, it was very stressful and then and then when I moved to China and my objective was to get a hold around my business I ended up having a few deals that went really well I had a couple of clients that, that treated me very well as well and uh, I was able to amass a, a little bit of money enough for me to climb Everest which was an extremely expensive thing and enough for me to buy uh, the trikes that I've had, which with the help of HP and different things, which which were expensive in, in their own right, and uh, but but once you're on the road, things don't cost that much. To be honest, I mean, I don't pay for gas. There's no paperwork with the trike. It's not like your licenses, fees, and then it's just as fast as you can pedal and and some food along the way, and it's not that expensive. And and in in the end, uh, I would hope that my videos would support the journey in itself, and then it would just self perpetuate. My big amount of money was the Everest and the trike and all of that stuff. Now if that's all bought, that's all done, you know. So ferry rides aren't that expensive, and, and beyond that, my transportation is me. <laughs> So as long as you can keep the engine going, yeah, then you're okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, Doug, you want to hit that picture for me, please? I'm going to ask you a question about uh, the nature of people. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we talked briefly about this uh, before we went on the air a, a few days ago. So uh, you find different, you've, you've uh, gone through uh, parts of China and, and South Korea and Japan. Tell me about what you found in terms of differences uh, and maybe similarities uh, among the, the the different or between the different uh, peoples of those countries, uh, well, people in generally, uh, people in generally, I, my grammar just totally sucks when you live in China for a while. <laughs> people in general are good. I mean, that is a that is a real constant, and uh, especially in the climate of the world it is right now with the news and being able to see the nastiest people on every device that you own instantly, it gives you a little bit of fear and it makes you feel like, wow, there's more bad people than good people, but I will have to, it's one of the purposes of the vlog is to kind of show that there's way more good people, way, way more good people than bad people. My, my exposure to uh, Asians in general and, and people in Korea, Korea and Japan are more modernized than China, uh, especially when you get off the beaten paths. Uh, China is very rural when you get out of the major cities, and but those people are so nice, and they're always willing to, uh, sometimes overly nice, especially in China. They, they, they'll surround the trike, like, you, know, like you, you end up pulling into some place to get a drink of Coke or something, and, and or, or whatever, and you'll find that you're going to have to hang out there for a while, because there's going to be a crowd of people around you that will be asking questions, and, and uh, you know, in some ways, it's a little intrusive, but if you're open-minded and a little bit more open like I am, it's actually a good thing, you know. Uh, if you're a little closed off, it might be a little unnerving, but uh, I, right. I love you it. You probably should be touring and doing what you're doing if you're closed off. You almost yeah, have to have an open uh, kind of uh, a personality that's going to want to see who's out there and who you can right, meet. Right, right, right. Open-minded all the time. So. All right, let's jump back towards uh, your, your trike a little bit. Uh, Doug, you want to hit that shot? Tell me about flats. Have you had any problems with flats at all? Um, I, was, I, I was pretty good on, on my Marathon Plus uh, from Schwab for a while. Um, I, I, I bought an extra set of tubes and tires between uh, version number uh, one and version number two, so I, or version number two and version number three. So after I, I tore my meniscus and I had to stop the tour, went to Everest, climbed Everest, came back, I actually redid my tires just for the hell of it because I had them. 
And so I felt like I was great. And then I was riding through, where was I? Was it Korea? I think it was Korea I was riding through. I would finished about two thirds of the country and I ended up uh, getting a flat. And then I got another flat and then I got another flat all on my rear tire. And uh, I don't, it was very, it was like a pinprick style. Yeah, that picture, it was, it was in Korea. And uh, I ended up uh, getting new, new tires again and new tubes and, and taped, taped the rims. And I haven't had any problems since. I think, was, I think I had some aberration on the rim or maybe there was some burr or something. The hole was, was extremely small. So. All right, let's, let's uh, widen it out a little bit then. How about, uh, about mechanicals in general? So uh, how about any other uh, major or even minor nagging uh, mechanical issues? Uh, I had, uh, <laughs> if any of you out there have the roll-off hub, there was, uh, there was a, there's a, that uh, mechanism that does the shifting that mounts onto the hub in the back, and there's a screw there, and uh, every so often that screw would, would let loose, and so your shifting mechanism would slide off of the actual pin that shifts the roll-off hub, and long story short, when you're riding, you end up losing, losing all of your, all of your gears. <laughs> And you end up like, what's going on? And, and it took me a while to figure out what was wrong with that. But I, I, that's something I could have fixed on the road. There was, there's really been nothing that I, that was like detrimental to the journey, other than little annoyances like that roll-off issue. Uh, I, I keep the trike clean, and, and, and I try and, you know, s s s keep things oiled. I, I actually, Pat at T Cycle is helping me get get a kit to oil the schlump and oil the roll-off, and I'm going to take them back to. Hokkaido so that I can uh, do my, I, I'm long overdue to uh, grease and, or oil my, my roll off and my, my schlumpf. But beyond yeah. that, nothing, nothing. With all the, considering all the miles that you've put in, that's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, how about, uh, how about encountering other touring uh, uh, bikers? Uh, I know you've had a couple of encounters. In general, what's your experience been with that? How do you feel about that? Uh, well, them? It was kind of neat. I was in uh, those two, the picture that you see right now, those are Switzerland. They're from Switzerland. I rode with them. They were the, like the first, first people I actually rode with more than one day. And uh, we rode together and it was, those guys were a really amazing people. You know, when you're cycling around the world, you're kind of a unique breed of person. And, uh, you know, birds of a feather kind of flock together in a certain, in a certain aspect. And we got along really, really well. I was, I had only seen a couple of trikes. I saw one trike while I was in Korea leaving Seoul, and it was the first day leaving Seoul. Hey, honey. And uh, I, I actually, uh, this trike was riding alongside me, and it was an ice trike, and it was one of those really low to the ground, really fast trikes, and uh, he wrote, I, I was able to get up beside, beside him. And uh, I said, you know, w w where are you from? He's like, Seoul. And then I said, uh, he's like, are you Matt? <laughs> I says, yeah, Jayo. And, uh, and it was funny. So I met somebody in a country that I'd never been to that knew me. And on a trike. On a trike. On a trike. <laughs> which is On a trike actually made it more understandable. I, yeah, I guess so. In, I had run into a couple of people that were off trikes that knew me. And that's even more interesting because – you know, they're walking down the street. I'm a subscriber, Jayo, and then they walk past, and you're, oh my gosh, that's pretty interesting. You know, because yeah. my my videos are fairly trike centric. You know, with a lot of sure. them. So, I guess that's what gets you here, actually, huh? Uh, yeah. uh, Newmar eighty seven on the chat. These videos, uh, referring to yours, uh, of course, uh, inspired me to get a trike. Thanks, Matt. And so that's kind of interesting. Uh, some people asking about where you're going to go, and we're going to ask, we're going to get to that here in just a minute. Uh, specifically, talking about New Zealand, but let's we're going to talk about where where you're going to go. Let me see what else on Cheddar. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Uh, more New Zealand stuff. I'll ask him whether he likes his knee savers. That seem to be a recent addition. Are you using knee savers, Matt? I am, and uh, I was expecting that question. And you guys really, really want to know how those are are doing. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, knee savers are, are like studs that you put between your pedals and your crank arms that allows your pedals to extend out by about an inch on either side, which allows your legs to be more or less, less like this and more like this, uh, which is more of like a natural standing position for your legs. And it's, and it's said that it allows you to take some strain off of the unusual position of pointing your 
feet in. And uh, I added them uh, a few months ago, I think. And uh, I'm really happy with them. But to give you a definitive, they're improving my life on the road, I can't quite say. Uh, I, I had been feeling, because I reduced all the weight on the trike in the beginning, and because my knees started to, you know how when you ride a trike and you start riding again, you start to feel like you build those trike legs, you know? And so I had started to reduce the strain on my knees by building the muscles around them, and I felt like that was helping me in my knee pain, which I was, I was experiencing knee pain in the beginning of this, this recent start. And, uh, and I can't, long story short, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm going to add whatever I can in order to make uh, the potential for me to take this the long road possible, right? So if, if knee savers statistically help, I'm going to add them. Can I really say that the day I put them on, the next day I felt like, wow, these are, are, are the game changer for me? I can't really say that. Can I say that they probably helped me? Probably so. Probably so. But I can't quantify it. Okay. Let's, uh, if we can, delve back into your personal life. Nothing new okay. for you, of course. So you talked uh, to us and, and show us extensively on your vlogs about your choice of this life on the road and sharing it and obviously you love to do this mm -hmm. but one year ago you had a baby girl we just met eva yeah. and i'm wondering if uh, if eva's birth having a child has changed your outlook i'm sure it's changed your outlook on life but has it changed your thinking in terms of the way you're living your life right now no no i mean um we met me and annie under the pretext that i was going to travel around the world i mean it was it was it was a it was a understood it was kind of you know it was understood from the very beginning uh -huh. and it was part of the reason that we had a relationship that we did and we still do because we both understand each other very well but any really wants to be a mother and has always wanted to be a mother and uh, so at one point in time it was discussed and uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a quick decision it wasn't a uh, overnight choice it was a long drawn out uh, decision yes Oh, what, what's going on over there? Just, <laughs> she likes the floor vents. It's, Anyways. It's, yeah. I think it maybe makes you uh, cherish and value the time that you do have with Eva when you take breaks and see her, so, which I know I you will, take time to do. Yeah, go ahead. I will take more breaks than the original plan. I will still travel around the world. I will still uh, uh, do these. What are you? Your dad's talking, so you want to talk, huh? Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, having her in my life is, is, I am, there's no regrets, and it's amazing, and I'm very happy. And Annie in her life in China is able to support her in a way that most people couldn't, you know. So, so uh, I, it's, 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 it's a balance, you know. And, uh, yeah, and who doesn't have that, right? Who right, doesn't right, have that? Right. To deal with a balance in their life, so I, I get that. I get that's yeah. really cool. All right, let's. It's, it's uh, a long story. <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand. All right. Um, I guess the next question has to do with what your immediate plans are now. So you left uh, your tour and your trike in in uh, Japan. So yeah. I know after this uh, this uh, short break in in the U.S. is over, you're going to head back to Japan. So over the next uh, next month or two, tell us the immediate plans. What do you got? What do you got in store? Well, um, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay here for a uh, few more days in, in uh, Southeast Michigan, and then uh, we're gonna bounce around the states for a little while. Um, I'm destined back for uh, Japan in uh, probably probably be, be back there in in a month uh, before I get back uh, from now. And then I'll I'll, I'll rejoin uh, myself uh, my shrike, which is sitting at the strange lady that I was dancing with. That was that was her place where the trike is, and so uh, I'll rejoin her and uh, get back on the trike and head south. The objective is to try and make it south uh, into warmer climates before the summer and fall wane into winter. Because if you're in in Japan, it can get kind of cold. So. Um, that's my that's my big objective you know okay. i don't have a lot of uh i don't have a lot of worry about you know it's not like i gotta be a certain place at a certain time i'm 
my life is dictated by seasons and whatever's most comfortable. Sure. Okay, let's let's go ahead and, and talk about that. So let's let's look at the big you know, I hate, hesitate to call it plan because I know you don't really do it that way. But you, <laughs> but you have some ideas about uh, about this. I know, especially originally, you had a little bit more of a specific plan, perhaps. You've got mm -hmm. that map. Uh, I've got a, a one that's not too good. Do you, you want to share that, maybe, yeah, Matt, sure. and then right. and, and talk to us a little bit about uh, where the Jaya World Tour uh, is probably headed? Okay. So this is um, this is a map of the tour, and let me pull this out. So if you look at the whole thing, you can see, I mean, that's a little bit difficult to <laughs> conceptualize. So let's break it into pieces. If you look at my, my map, you can see the colored points are places I've been. Black points are places I want to go. Um, yeah, uh, the colors are dictated by basically time. Everything that's yellow was before ver was version number one. Everything that's blue was version number two. And everything that's purple is the current, uh, current journey. Um, uh, the yellow Jayos, like in, I, I went, I ran a marathon in North Korea, which was kind of interesting and, and, uh, a mountain climbing. Those are non trike related points on the, on the map. And, uh, so the black points you can see start from the top of Japan. So I am currently the trike is right up here. This is Wakanai. After I leave, uh, uh, he leave here, go back to China and end up back in Japan. I'm going to head south. I'm, it's, a, it's kind of a long story, so I'm going to shorten it. Uh, I'm heading south through Japan, down through Southeast Asia, down, 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 crossing somehow over to Australia, and then I'm riding around the continent. If you know the way maps work, this Australia is a lot bigger than it looks on the typical flat map, so it's going to take a while for me to ride around. I'm going to hitch a ride over to New Zealand, ride New Zealand. And then at that point, get back on the, uh, on, the, on the mainland of the world here and, and get back to uh, here and up and down through India, through Pakistan and Iran. Originally on the map, I was going through uh, Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and some of these areas here, but they're a little bit uh, conflict heavy. So I'm going to go up through Iran and into Turkey probably, circumventing uh, Syria and obviously Saudi Arabia and Sudan. And then maybe adding Azerbaijan and Georgia to the list, which aren't actually on my original list. Then I'm going to head uh, through across Turkey, crossing Istanbul into all these uh, Slovak countries, down across Greek, uh, into Greece, into Italy, and up, 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 all the way to the top of Norway. I might go to Slav Slav Svalbard, which is this northern island almost to the uh, North Pole, which would be cool. I've heard of a couple of friends, and I'll add that. Then I'm heading south uh, from there, down through the UK, all the way down into Africa, down, down, down. Uh, depending on how volatile different political situations are there, I might adjust things. Once I get to South Africa, Cape Town, I'm going to hitch a ride on a freighter. One of the rules on the journey is that I try to do as much uh, uh, keeping away from flights because I want to stay on the ground, whether it's water or land. So I think I could probably get a freighter or a uh, maybe hitch a ride and do some work because you can do work on these uh, uh, freight freight journeys. So I'll get one of those to take me to South America, in which case I'll go down to Antarctica. There's a there's actually a, a, a place, a, a bicycle race that takes place in, in Antarctica, and it would be interesting to do it. I know there's been an ice trike with a full fat, full fat ice trike that has uh, done a ride there, and I'd like to do that as well. So then we come up through South America, bouncing around from Rio to uh, uh, Machu Picchu and Bolivia and all the amazing places there, through uh, Central America, up across the, I might actually ditch the trike here for a little journey because I'd always like to hike the Appalachian Trail, uh, maybe meet the trike when I get uh, across it and then come into Canada, come up and down through into Detroit and then across to Los Angeles. And then, <laughs> yeah, easy, right? Uh, I'm speechless. But I, <laughs> let, me, let me catch my breath. That's, uh, you know, I guess ambitious really isn't the word. It is so intriguing to see what you've got planned. So, yeah, I mean, this is a lifestyle, so it's going to take uh, it's going to take a little while. But you're all about the journey, I know. So that's great. That's it's yeah. good to know that. And that's uh, that map is on your on your website so people can go and, and yep. check it out at any time. Right. So. Yep. All right. Um, we're. Getting towards the end here, I had a question. 
Oh, and this this is something I'm sure you want to talk about. So um, from playing by, hi, uh, hi Matt, will there be any Jayo merchandise like caps or trike flags to support you? Well, uh, as we're talking about T-Cycle, I mean, uh, Pat at TerraCycle has uh, the flag that I that I fly. Now, um, Shelly is right here, Shelly Stransoner. She, uh, she produced that big fat flag that I have with the JY on it. She actually made that for me. I have a bunch of people that make uh, interesting things for me as I ride, uh, but the ones at T-Cycle are actually uh, a product, and uh, you can buy them at a link that uh, Gary, maybe you can share it in the description if somebody I wants will, to course. support the journey. A little bit of uh, the uh, price of that flag goes to me, and Pat and I have kind of a little deal. I, I want shirts and uh, I want shirts and uh, tank tops and and uh, uh, polos, and we're working on getting those made. I've been working on that to get those made for I think multiple years now, and. Uh, I've had some problems, and uh, I'm still trying to get those fixed. So um, hopefully when I get back to China, they'll be ready and waiting, and uh, I can put a few of those on. I'm, I'm actually setting up a patron page. It's a Patreon is a Patreon. way for, mm -hmm. for, for people to support uh, somebody's creative efforts. I think you have a Patreon, right? I don't. Or, but, oh, you don't. You don't. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if you're an artist or somebody that produces something that is in their idea of value but maybe can't necessarily be purchased, like I produce these videos, and I think they might be inspirational to people. And if somebody wants to donate to my cause, they can do that through a Patreon account, and I'm setting that up as well. And then hopefully, if somebody contributes to the Patreon level uh, high enough, then I can send them a shirt. And I'm thinking about working out some sort of a reward system for people that help me out and uh, give them a shirt in return. Okay, super. All right, let's. Uh, I guess my last regular question is going to be about when you get to LA. What, what's going to happen when the Jayo World Tour finally does come in, to an end? Um, have you given any thought to what happens then, or is it all about what's happening in, in the tour? I, I live in the now. Uh, I, I, I built the plan, right? The plan is meant to be completed. But there's no, I don't know, that's so far in the future that uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily worry about it. And uh, uh, the plan, although it's not it's not chiseled in stone you know what i mean so there maybe i maybe i continue from la and ride around into russia and, and come back down you know go canada uh, alaska russia and then come back down to china who knows you know so um i just want to make sure that i'm happy that i'm inspiring people along the way and that uh, that i'm living a, a jayo lifestyle you know yeah so. yeah i can see that so all right uh, two quick questions from our viewers that uh uh, one of which I think is actually here. Uh, I see Mike Mowat, uh, and he uh, asked a question via Facebook uh, and wanted to let you know that Matt is from the same high school as me, though I think we're about six years apart, he says, and he's a little older. Uh, wow. Small world. Two crazy recumbent folks from the same area. I read of his travels a few years ago uh, in our local paper. Uh, so I guess the Detroit area paper. There. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Daily. Yeah. Yep, Mike Mowat. And Daryl Jordan, also via Facebook, wants to know about uh, some do's and don'ts of shooting ride videos. I think we talked about that uh, pretty well. Um, you know, what this does kind of just kind of gets to another question I saw on chat a little bit earlier, asking whether you're going to write, uh, uh, write a, a book or talk, you know, maybe either about your travels or instructional kind of book about uh, how you would go about uh, doing a world tour. Is that anything uh, like you do or are you sticking to the vlogs? Um, I, I think that's what the vlogs are, you know, the vlogs are my book and uh, I might do some overreaching things and, uh, you know, uh, that, that are larger and more, more like maybe poignant, like pointed at certain, certain aspects, maybe down the road, because I'll have so much content, you know. Um, and then uh, I'll, I don't, I don't know. I, I like to write, and I think that that might be something in the future. But right now, I'm focusing on video. Video takes so much time. Writing a book would be like seems like writing a book would be easy compared to what it's you not do on the radar. Day. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Matt. That's pretty much the last of the questions. Do you uh, have any final thoughts you want to share with us at this point? Um, no, no. I think you were saying uh, before that uh, people want inspiration to do something and they're they're afraid of it I would say that uh, don't don't worry about fear I mean fear is anything good that you do in life you you have apprehension and fear to do so and it, and that passes that's temporary fear and pain are temporary
but the living an amazing life is something that that you can cherish forever so jayo <laughs> jayo and that's uh, yeah so if you want to see how how matt uh, lives his life jayo and how he uh, documents it it's all about his videos uh, matt i want you to tell us uh, what you always tell us at the end of your vlog and it's it's the question of uh, how can people find out more and how can they support you tell us about where they can find out more well i've got a i've got a website jayo.com j a y o e and it's all one word you can find me anywhere by plugging that into google because that's kind of like my word and uh, you watch my videos, make some comments. I like, I like the social aspect of, of reading those comments and being part of the community through my videos. Um, if you are along the way, I know you guys were talking that you were in Japan or Korea as I was riding through. I, I, I want to make uh, my journey a little bit more uh, linked with people in the trike and bike community. So if, if you feel like I'm along the way, if you look at my map and you say, hey, I'm at one of these points, please stay in contact reach out to me through my YouTube channel or my Facebook uh, Jayo life j-a-y-o-e-l-i-f-e -E. and uh, yeah yeah then we can you can be part of my vlogs and you know we can, we can share our lives together excellent thank you Matt uh, so uh, want to thank you uh, so much for uh, spending the time. I know you're, it's kind of packed for you and you got so much going on. Thank you so much for sharing uh, what you do with us at the Laid Back Bike Report. Uh, oh, good luck to you, Eva, Annie. It's nice to see hey, you Annie, going away there. Back, you want to shoot back to them, Doug? Hi. That's Annie, and there's Eva again. So, Hi. wonderful family. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs> we'll be here. Well, thank you. Bye-bye okay, now. See you, Gary. See you, right, see you guys. Matt. Bye -bye. All right, Matt Galat, folks, uh, that was an amazing interview. So glad to have him on. And I want to thank our two incredible sponsors, uh, TerraCycle and HP Bellatechnic, for stepping up on short notice and supporting us. On this. All, right, let's get All right, let's. He's muted there. Are we gone? There we go. Uh, let me go again because uh, there's a little bit of an echo there. So thanks to TerraCycle and HP Bellatechnic for stepping up on short notice and uh, supporting us on this uh, special edition laid back bike report with Matt Galat. So thanks a lot. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna close out by uh, asking you to uh, take a look at the description section of the uh, YouTube video for this and all of our videos where you're gonna find a clickable table of contents and all links mentioned during the show. Um, I've got special sections down there for you to click so you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can watch it piece at a time. And all the links, as I've talked about, I'll go through the show after we're done here. And I'm going to put all the links that Matt talked about and we talked about so that you can click on them and see what we're talking about. Next laid back bike report, we have got Tim Brummer. This is August 13th, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Tim Brummer from Lightning Cycles, an interesting guy. You won't want to miss that one. And uh, let me, uh, Doug, if you can uh, put yourself on there, I want to I wanna thank Doug for uh, <laughs> coming in at the last moment to help me out and doing an amazing job of switching you between the pictures. Time. Doug, I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the wonderful job you did today. Thank you. You bet. All right. And uh, Denny's here, but he's had technical problems the whole time. Denny, are you? No, I, yeah, I'm here. Uh, we got you there. Go ahead and switch to Denny and let me thank him for doing a great try. It <laughs> doesn't work out every time, Denny. Yeah, so. this is just one of those days. That I am glad you got ahead of me. I'm glad you were here. All okay. right. And then back to me, Doug, if you would. And uh, I want to thank all of you. Uh, for joining me on this very special laid back bike report with uh, Matt Galat. Uh, and being on the chat, I, I couldn't get to all of you, but uh, I tried to get as many as I could. I hope you enjoyed uh, chatting and, uh, and watching the show. Hope you'll be back uh, next time on that. Uh, Brian uh, Ball isn't with us today, but of course, he's always supporting us, helps us out on Bent Rider uh, by listing our links and all. So we appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. And, uh, and that's going to be about it. So um, I did get a tip from uh, one of our viewers, Zachary Mormon, told me this morning that Inner City Bike now has a program where they're taking uh, Velomobiles that have been traded in and refurbishing them for resale. 
So those are some amazing deals to be had. When I looked on that website this morning, there were like three or four left to be sold and like about eight or 10 that had already been sold. So if you're interested in a Velomobile, and you know we talk about them all the time here on Layback Bike Report, uh, enter City Bike. I'll put, the, uh, I'll put the link, of course, in the description. So uh, how can you uh, help us out here at the Layback Bike Report as we wind it up? Well, you can click on that little red subscribe button as we talked about. Click on the little white I button for more information. Head to our website, laidbackbikereport.com, and you're going to find a lot of stuff there, including all of our sponsors. We have the two wonderful sponsors today. All of our sponsors are listed on the top of the homepage of our website. Please support our sponsors. It's what helps us stay on the air. You're going to find our rec most recent show, our upcoming shows, calendar uh, of events. You're going to find that on there. Um, and our past shows and some bonus material, all kinds of good stuff. And, of course, you can always buy a hat. Uh, we, have, uh, we have hats for sale, 25 bucks, 5 bucks shipping and handling, and uh, that helps us out as well. So all of that available at laidbackbikereport.com. So until our next webcast, folks, from all of us at the Laidback Bike Report, Jayo.